America's Heartland. We're live in Omaha, Nebraska at Morrison Stadium on the campus of Creighton University. The number two seed Blue Jays will attempt to defend their Missouri Valley Conference Tournament Championship against the top seeded Drake Bulldogs. The winner will gain entry into the NCAA Tournament. Last year, the Creighton Blue Jays upset the top seeded Drake Bulldogs 3-1 in the championship match of the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament to gain entry into the NCAA field for just the second time in school history. Today, these two sides meet again for the MVC title and an automatic berth into the NCAA tournament. An undefeated conference record has given Drake their third straight regular season title, but satisfaction will not be achieved unless they can gain revenge on number two seed Drake. It's the Missouri Valley Conference Championship. A cool, crisp afternoon in Omaha, Nebraska. Ideal soccer weather for this championship match. As the top two seeds, Drake and Creighton, both received buys directly into the semifinal round of the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. On Friday here at Morrison Stadium, the Bulldogs defeated Illinois State 2-1, and the Blue Jays were victorious 3-2 versus Evansville. Glad you're with us on ESPNU with Wendy Gabauer Palladino. I'm Sean Wheelock. Wendy Creighton trying to defend their tournament championship. They'll do so with a number of new, good, very talented freshman players. And one of those freshman players to keep your eye on is Marcy Gann. She's a forward. She leads her team in goals and points, has had a tremendous, impactful freshman year. She plays with a quiet confidence and loves to run at players. Now, the player that she's going to try and combine with, or continue to combine with so effectively, is sophomore Christine Wilbert, who will come off the bench because she has a strained MCL in her knee. Coach Erickson has to get her on the field, however, because she has factored into 70% of her team's goals this season. Bruce Erickson has Creighton opening up in a 4-3-3 formation. A weapon to keep your eye on is the flip throw of number six sophomore Sam Russell. To say it's dangerous, in my opinion, is an understatement. Drake's defense is going to have their hands full if they let that ball drop in the box. Drake did not begin playing women's soccer until 2002. Today, this is really a culmination to a great four years for their seniors. Oh, the senior class has been very impactful, and one of the players to keep your eye on is Schmitz. Now, she has had a phenomenal uh, career. She is Drake's all-time leader in goals and points. She has two game-winning goals this year and was the 04 MVC Player of the Year. Corbin Stone is the head coach of Drake. They also open in a 4-3-3. Keep your eye on the left side of the field. Lindsey Portencasso has big responsibility today. Today, Coach Stone actually tries to keep that side open so that she can run the flank. We're going to keep an eye on her touches and crosses into the box. She's also factors into the set pieces. She takes a lot of those. When we return on ESPNU, we'll have the first half kickoff. Top seed of Drake versus number two Creighton for the MVC Tournament Championship and a berth in the NCAA Field of 64. Morrison Stadium, Omaha, Nebraska on the campus of Creighton University one of the finest college soccer venues in all of the United States, our host today, for the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament Championship. Number one, Drake, three-time regular season champions against the number two seed, Creighton Blue Jays. With Wendy Gabauer Palladino, I'm Sean Wheelock. Glad you're with us on ESPNU. What a perfect day for soccer, Sean. It's beautiful, sunny, and you're right. You can't, can't have a more beautiful complex for soccer. We are underway. The winner of this match be the champions of the MVC tournament and they will also gain automatic entry into the NCAA field of 64. First opportunity, minute one, put right on target. Nervous moments there, Wendy, the opening shot coming just 20 seconds in. Well, it looks like Drake's defense was a little bit nervous there and Katie Brennan did a good job to run on the edge of the defense for a nice little chance. She just didn't relax just before she got that shot off. Temperature wants to approach 50 degrees. Very windy. Blowing at the back right now. The Creighton attack. You know, John, that'll be a big factor in this match as well, especially with air balls into uh, the box. Bruce Erickson, his seventh year at Creighton, 71 victories, 59 losses, 14 draws. Led them to two appearances in the NCAA tournament last year in 2002. The 
defending MVC tournament champions. As well, he was the coach of the year in 2002 in the MVC. Drake in the black and white uniforms, attacking from the right to the left. Creighton windated, windated on the attack in the all white, attacking from the left to the right. Marcy Gans, the freshman. Better at the opening of our telecast. Eight goals leading the team this season. She's been a great discovery for Bruce Erickson. Mine. Ford, no joy there. Second opportunity for Creighton. Mosier Blyle. Brennan. Allie Peets. Sister Katie on the substitute's bench, the sophomore pushing forward. Corbin Stone, the head man at Drake, started this program in 2002. 45 victories, 26 losses, 9 draws. Three-time defending regular season champions of the Missouri Valley Conference. Victory today would have him in his first ever NCAA tournament. It's amazing as well, Sean. He is the three-time coach of the year in 03, 04, and 05. And as you mentioned, these seniors are so impactful for their squad. That was, in fact, his first recruiting class when he arrived at Drake. Confusion there with Valentin and the goalkeeper, Zimmerer. Ball set forward into space. Ihimalu making the run. Tochi Ihimalu. The Nigerian-born striker sees the ball sent over the touchline and a throw into Creighton. The sister of Ugo, of course, the outstanding first-year professional for Los Angeles Galaxy, or through to the Major League Soccer Cup final. From the flip throw from Sam Russell, that's what we expected. Trying to have that almost as a corner kick, Wendy. Well, and the way that Drake played that is exactly how they need to play every single one of those. If they let that ball drop in the box, that's when they're going to have danger. Sent that ball through. Great continuing this attack. Lissa Wade. Arvison. Arvison. Thought she had the dispossession instead, blowing the whistle. The referee of our match, Sam Trigi. All time series level at three victories apiece with no draws. The only meeting this year. Great winning 3 0 at home, October 21st. Creighton winning the Missouri Valley Conference final in Des Moines, 3-1. November 7th of last year. And that's still, I think, a loss that really haunts Drake. Revenge very much on their mind in this match, Wendy. Well, that's one of the things that makes these games so exciting, is avenging losses and uh, winning conference championships. And as you mentioned, Sean, the winner goes to the NCAA tournament. I think both coaches realizing that a loss and they probably will not go in as an at-large bid. Opportunity now in the penalty area and sent over the byline. Corner kick now awarded to Drake. First time in the opening five minutes of our match, they've looked somewhat cohesive pushing forward on the attack. Nikki Faden, the junior midfielder, will take this short. Oswald, still Oswald. Shot did not get through to the goalkeeper. Get a corner kick to Drake. Once more, this will be Faden. Oswald again showing us the option short. This time on the right footed out swinger. Wilberts. Sending that through to the goalkeeper, but the whistle blew first. See Valerie Zimmerer, the goalkeeper for Creighton. Creighton winning their semifinal. Their home stadium, 3-2. Thrown from Bailey Wilberts. Wilberts again on the second effort, deflected off the head of Sam Russell, out for a throw-in for the Drake Bulldogs. Turn for the angle all the way through to the goalkeeper from Sarah Foote. Not striking that as though she would like to with the right foot. Yeah, I think she probably would have liked to have that back, but you never know. you got to take your half chances. And as well, she had number four, Andrea Schmitz, who we've talked about already at the top of the show. Very impactful senior forward who's found the back of the net a ton of times. 
for Drake, and she was right there, maybe for a little deflection. Throw in from Creighton. And keeping it from going out along the touchline. Allie Peets, nice idea sent forward for Marcy Gans. Whistle Wade. All the way through to the goalkeeper, Aaron Jarvis. Junior making her 20th appearance of the season. She has played every minute as the goalkeeper for Drake in 2005. She's conceded 19 goals, nine shutouts this year. Interestingly, they do not have a backup goalkeeper. They've never even had to play with one. Their backup goalkeeper is redshirted. So what we found oh. out is that quite possibly maybe Underwood, who has had some time with the women's basketball squad, who's good with her hands, may go in as one of the options if, in fact, Jarvis went down with an injury. Although Underwood does not ever in training appear as a goalkeeper. That would be absolute worst case scenario for Corbin Stone. The kick by Jarvis. And the referee, Sam Trigge, blowing his whistle. Drake will have the restart. Nikki Faden, key to this midfield. Forward by the junior. Horton Costo, the left back, pushing forward. Horton Costo, that's a nice idea. Couldn't get through. Mosier Blyle. Now Creighton looking to counterattack. Brennan. The dispossession opportunity for Drake. They'll try to punish that mistake. Bailey Wilberts. Wilberts couldn't turn into the penalty area. Wind really starting to blow here. Take a look at this feistiness here. We're going to see this all game long. There's so much on the line with this match. Obviously a conference championship and a berth to the NCAA tournament. And this conference has never sent more than one team to the NCAA tournament. So the odds are that the loser here probably would not get an at-large bid. So again, everything on the line for postseason play. Emily Munn. The ball carrying from Munn, probably 20, 25 mile an hour gust right now to the back of the Creighton Blue Jays attack. Right now we'll have this restart, rather on the throw in. Ball rolled over the touch line. Horton Casso assessing her options. This is Sarah Foot. And Foot foul from behind. And again, these two teams just going at it there. See, Blyle goes down. But Drake gets the kick. Should be Danielle Oswald. Junior central defender. Well struck into the wind. Easy on the one hop for the goalkeeper, Valerie Zimmerer. Sophomore was a game time decision whether she would start instead of Kristen Casey. They have shared the number one goalkeeping duties this year for Creighton. Clock is stopped, and we may have our first booking of the match. Showing the yellow card is Lissa Wade. So Wade booked in the 10th minute. Sam Trigge, the referee, I think, sending the message early, Wendy, that this is going to be a well-played match. He's not going to go in for that type of tactic. Well, Creighton plays a very physical style. They go after it, so my guess is that at the end of the match, they probably will be leading in the fouls category. This is a little farther out than, than a place that might prove to be very dangerous, and, and uh, Creighton does clear the ball nicely there. But the wind is going to be a factor on those kicks from that distance. If it was going the other way, that distance would have been a very dangerous chance. That ball would have dropped right down the face of the goal. Gannon have played forward to foot. Ball rolling over the touch line, throw into Drake. Port Casa. I can tell early on that Creighton is not going to allow Port and Casa to, to run that uh, left flank. Got some defensive players in there. And Kimbalu found no joy trying to go 1v3. Great resetting in their own half. Daniel Oswald. The idea was there from Oswald, couldn't get it through for foot on the near side. Every ball is being challenged in this match, Wendy, really as you would expect in a tournament championship. 
Well, as I mentioned earlier, everything's on the line. There's, it's just such an important, important matchup. And as well, we talked about the senior class. These players for Drake want to go in when they want to go out on top with the conference championship. And we're going to see those physical duels all day long. Drake pushing forward in the attacking half. Bailey Wilberts. Now Andrea Schmitz, the senior. Cross is spilled. Finally sent away very nicely by Allie Peets. Helping her goalkeeper greatly there as Zimmerer was down and out after spilling that cross. My Himmelin. Tochai Himmelin. Dance making the run. All the way through to the byline. Brennan giving chase, can't run onto it over the byline and a goal kick. Wendy is a, Wendy is a three time All America, former U.S. international. You have to be able to relate to the intensity of this match. Oh, and, and this is a great opportunity here right in front of the net there by Drake, and Creighton doesn't make a good handle on it from the in the nets, but they clear it out. Um, it, yes, it's just it's an exciting time. Um, you know, in the college game, there's so much to offer to these players, both on the field, off the field. I experienced it myself. I'm very feel very fortunate to have been able to, but when you get to a conference championship, you just leave everything on the field. And obviously the coaches hope that they're impact players. We mentioned them at the start. With with Drake, it comes from some young or some seniors, six seniors in the senior class that started this program, and with Creighton, they've got some youngsters making a real impact. Schmidt from Fate, crossing too high on the cross. Little Arvison now looking to counterattack. Arvison, well done forward from Marcy Gans, the freshman. Gans couldn't turn. You perhaps discount the regular season result, Drake winning home in Des Moines 3-0 back on October 21st. Does everything change in a tournament final? Well, I think what has to happen is Drake can't be overconfident going into this match. Uh, I think Creighton has a, you know, obviously a lot of pride. They want to regain their pride from that match. A 3-0 is a, is a resounding result, and they want to come back here and, and regroup and, and get a win out of this game. So I think it's important for, for Coach Stone to make sure that his team doesn't get overconfident, and for Coach Erickson, it's a huge motivational factor. Opportunity for Schmidt. Couldn't find a way through. Injury there at the top of the box for Drake. Clock is stopped now by the referee, Sam Trigi. Not a booking just for the injury. Just a little collision there at the top of the box. Inadvertent in my opinion. I don't think it was a malicious foul. Sarah Foote did not need eight of the trainer, so she'll stay in. We remain 11 v 11. Over the touch line, throw in the crate. Obviously, they want to take advantage of this wind in the first half, try to launch some shots from distance. Yeah, they, ha they need to do that. They need to take every half chance. I would say even from 30, 35 yards out, go ahead and crack it. The sun as well will be a factor for Jarvis. This is Sarah Foote for no ill effects from going down just moments ago. Over the touchline, throw in now to Drake. Melissa Nelson, the junior striker. Mallory McGannon into space. Foot giving chase. Is that one by Valentin? Yvonne Valentin. Still opportunity for Drake in the shadow of the penalty area. Schmitz couldn't turn for a shot. Counter-attacking opportunity. I him a little. No joy there. To the Creighton bench area. Blue Jays will have the throw in. Quickly for Marcy Gans. Obviously, they want to get her more involved into this attack. Justin down by Fate. Brennan couldn't turn on the touch. One back in the open midfield. Just the Mosier Blyle. Emily Munn. Good direct service there for Munn. Ahimelu had trouble on her first touch. Still Ahimelu battling. Mosier Blyle. Ahimelu showing herself as a target in the penalty area. Himmelu now from 24 yards away. Himmelu did very well. Emily Munn, one thinking about a left-footed shot, turns playmaker. Himmelu not 
going in on that challenge. Forward by Daniel Oswald. Still in the attacking half for Crate Munn. Looking on a second effort. Foot just 1v3. That's a very, very smart ball to Melissa Nelson. Crate could be on here with this attack. Nelson off of Arvison over the touchline and a throw in. Wendy Drake looking a little better on that counter attack. Well, you know, they changed the point of the attack. They're trying to let the ball work for them a little bit more and try and tire Creighton's legs out. That was one of the game plans going into this game. They wanted to slow the game down because Creighton is the more physical team. Coach Stone recognizes that. Lauren Haguda, the junior defender, subbing into this match. 19th appearance of the season. She scored one goal. Game-winning goal in the semifinal match. Away with authority by Arvison. Now to Drake. Both sides trying to gain control of this match through the midfield. Still very, very even. Schmidt. By Himalu. Dispossessed. Katie Brennan, this could be on now for the Blue Jays. The attack is snuffed out. Vandalow. Buda, the substitute, has a touch. Like trying to get something going still in their own half. This is good pressure by Creighton. Working as a unit defensively, and the defense starts up top. Creighton will have the throw in. This will be Sam Russell. This is going to be the flip throw again. The sun is a huge factor in Jarvis's eyes. If she can get this ball lobbed up there and it drops in the box again, watch to see whether Drake can defensively make a play on it. If they let it hit the ground, they're going to be in trouble. Almost used like a free kick. Headed away with authority nicely by Vandalo. Lyle coming away from that 50-50 ball winning. Talk about athleticism. My, my guess is she was a former gymnast. Incredible. And again, we can't emphasize enough what a weapon this is. In fact, she's assisted on a number of goals from her side this year. The funny story I heard... Um, Sean was that Coach Erickson, you know, was telling her that it would be all right if she taught some of the other team the flip throw. And I was thinking, man, I would break in half if I tried <laughs> to do the flip throw. Still, it's becoming a little more prevalent. You see it more in women's soccer than you do on the men's side. It's still unusual, but I guess it's not that rare anymore. But apparently when he was recruiting her, he didn't realize that she had this weapon. Restart for Drake. Nikki Faden, the junior midfielder, will take this with the right Coach foot. Going in for 18, Amy. Faden, short, smart ball down the line on the cross, and that's well off target. Deflected on the cross and a corner kick. Opportunity now for Drake. Faden will again take this with the right foot. Oswald is an option short, now moving into the penalty area. Offering 17 yards from the goal line. On the right-footed outswinger. Headed away by Valentin. Well done defensively. By Himalu. Now Marcy Gans. Just a 2v5 for the Blue Jays. Still Gans against three markers. Gans did very well. One pushing forward from the right back position. Difficult ball. Well received by Aaron Jarvis. Top of your screen on ESPNU, scoreless in the 20th minute. Championship match, Missouri Valley Conference. Number one, Drake versus number two, Creighton. This is a phenomenal facility in Omaha, Nebraska. Morrison Stadium opened in 2003. Really no hyperbole saying this is one of the finest college soccer venues in the U.S. Well, 6,000 people very much based on a small scale European or English stadium. There's Wilrit entering the match. 
for Katie Brennan. Again, in the open, we mentioned that she is she has factored into 70% 70 70 of her team's goals. Obviously, uh, just critical for Coach Erickson to get her on the field. And, and I'll, again, tell you that she has an MCL strain, which is why you see that brace on her right knee. She's trying to get used to the brace. MCL strains are, are very, very painful, but they just have to have her on the field. She and Gans, in fact, have combined. Combined, been a great, great combo there on five goals in the season. So as well, they play well together. That's Wendy Gabauer, Palladino. I'm Sean Wheelock. Glad you're with us on ESPNU. This is the championship match, the Missouri Valley Conference. The winner will gain entry into the field of 64 in the NCAA Women's Tournament. Number one, Drake Bulldogs, three-time regular season MVC champions versus the number two seed Creighton Blue Jays, the holders of this tournament trophy. Last year in the final, played in Des Moines, Iowa. It was Creighton victorious over Drake. Obviously, rematch. Revenge on the minds of the Bulldogs. Culmination for the seniors as this program began. Hard to believe with all of their success in 2002. Corbett Stone, the head coach of Drake, telling me in our meeting today that it's really been a pleasure for him to have brought these players in, starting the program in 2002, and see them develop as soccer players from 2002 now to 2005, from their freshman to their senior year. And one of the other things that he emphasizes is the student athlete and being good in the classroom. And as well, he has four players that are on the ESPN, the magazine academic all district team, Nelson Underwood, Wilberts, and Schmidt. So he, he himself graduated cum laude. Really emphasizes the importance of doing well in the classroom. Scoreless in our match in the first half. When we return on ESPNU, the conclusion of half number one. Scoreless, Springton versus Drake. Scoreless in the 23rd minute. The championship match, the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. Number one, Drake, looking for their first ever appearance in the NCAA Tournament. They will have that with a victory today versus the number two seed, Creighton, looking for their third ever appearance in the NCAA field. This is the arena grass surface. It's an artificial surface, but this seems very true, Wendy. I was walking around earlier on the field. It seems a lot truer than some of the other artificial surfaces you see in soccer. It's beautiful, and it's probably the best that I've ever seen. I walked across it as well. The ball just is going to take perfect bounces on this. You never have to worry about, about the imperfections of the bounce. Some artificial surfaces, the ball hops and even runs. Again, very, very true. 
And as we're watching this match, it looks as though they are playing on actual grass. Drake the top seed, they're in the black and white, attacking from the right to the left. Great the number two seed in the all white, attacking from the left to the right. This is Creighton attacking right now. Tochai Himalu, the sophomore, sending it forward. Jarvis a bit slow to come out, still no worries. Wilrick was the player giving chase. One area lead by Emily Munn, nicely done. Sam Trigi, the referee, blowing his whistle, detecting the foul. Nice start now for Drake. It'll be Port and Casso. Back conservatively, Vandalo. Touched by McGannick. Line Rao. He's Rao pushing forward from the right back position. Difficult ball played forward with the left foot, so a throw in for Creighton. Truly amazing that you can start without a win, without a draw in your opening five matches and then get things together in Wendy like Drake has done. 11 victories then and only one loss, two draws. It is incredible to start out the season that way, and what we've what we heard and doing a little digging is that Coach Stone actually wanted to try and uh, expose his team to some adversity to make them stronger, and I I would say that is exactly how this is scripted out. And he felt like the only team of those five losses that they were really dominated by was Florida, and they were playing with the other teams. So very, Coach Stone is very. Uh, focused on trying to play a very tough out-of-conference schedule. In, in conference, they've obviously proved their success. They've only given up one goal to conference opponents, which is phenomenal. So this Drake defense is rock solid. They'll have to keep their eye on number 23, Wilbert, who's subbed into the game, and we keep an eye on her up top. She's wearing that knee brace because of an MCL strain. Drake perfect in the regular season in Missouri Valley Conference play. Five victories, no losses, and a draw. Well, that's nearly perfect. Jarvis, the right-footed punt. Arvison, but find a way through. Sam Russell, been conservatively played back. Touch by Peets, Arvison. Ahead of Moser Blyle. Touchline and a throw into the Bulldogs. So back to the substitutes bench. Those of you not that familiar with college soccer, different from the FIFA standard, of course, Wendy where it's unlimited substitutions, no re-entries in the first half, and then uh, either the overtime periods lasting 10 minutes each, but you do get one re-entry in the second half. Allows coaches to take players out, especially in the second half, get them a rest of five to eight minutes and bring them back. Also, you can go very, very deep onto the, your reserves bench. Well, that'll help Creighton a lot because they really do have a deep bench and they like to sub a lot. Drake, on the other hand, really has three key subs. We've already seen one of them come onto the field, Hogada, Underwood, and Brown will probably see some time as well. So that should help Creighton a lot. Of course, those of you, again, not that familiar with college soccer, notice, of course, that we are counting down the clock, similar to how they used to do it in MLS. The first four years, 96 through 99. The referee does have the ability to stop the clock, as we've already seen today. The flip throw in by Sam Russell. The official time is kept by the scorekeeper on the scoreboard. Ihemelu trying to turn from 16 yards out, still forcing her way through, couldn't get away a shot. Now Emily Munn, thinking about a crack from distance, instead playing it through. Perhaps should have shot there, Wendy, as that ball rolls over the byline. Coming up next on ESPNU, catch the Big East Field Hockey Championship. 
the Villanova Wildcats take on the Yukon Huskies, the stadium complex on the campus of Rutgers University. The Big East Field Hockey Championship coming up next right here on ESPNU. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Wind continuing to swirl, gust of 20 to 25 miles an hour. And yet, surprisingly, Creighton is not taking the shots from distance. I think I would be encouraging the players shoot anything within 28 yards. Yeah, I agree with you. Anything becomes a half chance, especially with, with the wind. But really, it's a, it's a tribute to Drake is, is uh, tough on defense. You know, they're not letting these first and second balls bounce. They're trying to maintain possession of them. They're doing a good job to put pressure on Creighton. In the 29th minute. On the junior. Russell. And the flick forward. This is what under I Himalu. Be a very dangerous player. Scored four goals this season. I Himalu. Very smart ball. Trying to leave for Wilred. Did not quite work. Now the counter attack for the Bulldogs. Getting numbers forward. Andrea Schmidt making the run centrally. Leaving that for Wilberts. That's over the touchline and a throw into the Blue Jays. Again, Munn will take this. She's been very, very active in this match. On the stroke of the half hour, Wendy, are you surprised we're still scoreless in this match? Well, not really. I'm not seeing either team. I want to come back to that thought. Hard on the tackle, fearlessly in the penalty area, leaving her feet, Yvonne Valentin, paying great dividends. Great, of course, that's their success. Winning this tournament last year and in 2002. Valentin, the senior, looking now for her third trophy. Coach Erickson refers to her as the lifeblood of this squad. She's the player who sets the tempo, and a, a, a crushing defensive tackle like that sends a message as well to, to Drake's offense. The head of Russell. That's number 11. Throw into Drake. But as I was saying, Sean, I just don't feel like either team right now is really settled into a tempo. You can see it through the midfield. The passes are just not connecting. Both of these schools very, very skilled through the midfield, but perhaps the nerves, Wendy, of this championship match. Back to the substitutes bench. Katie Peets coming in. Twin sister of Allie Peets, who wears the number two shirt, the left back for Creighton. The Blue Jays throw in. Off of Wilrek, couldn't chest that down. Haguda quickly with the throw. Haguda on the return. Forward with the left foot. Narrowly by Lissa Wade. We Will can't Rick. say enough about Lissa Wade. She was the two-time Defensive Player of the Week back in the month of September. She's critical in this Creighton defense. Number 10. Horton Casso keeping her nerves, sending that away. I'm sure with this wind, they want to be playing balls back into the penalty area to a fellow defender. Thaden. She can do some special things in the midfield with time and space. She's a transfer from Texas, played on the U21 national team. Early on the dispossession, still the opportunity for Drake. Thaden. Left into space, this could be on. Leaving her feet very, very well done that time by Lissa Wade. Fearlessly there. Sinead Brown. Now on the full counter attack for the Blue Jays. From Arvison. The idea was there along that far side flank. Throw in. Through the center circle. Right to Aguda. She loses out in the midfield. Now Munn. Himalu. Played for Peets. Katie Peets. Himalu giving chase.
The longer this though goes scoreless, Wendy, doesn't this have to favor Creighton as the number two seed, knowing how strong Drake is this year? Well, I think with the home field advantage, you can't say enough about that. And this season, they've been so dominant against conference opponents. Sam Russell again with the flip throw, using it just like a corner kick. Such an advantage to have a player that can whip a ball in like that from the throw in. Fade now looking to get something going. Here's the time and space she desires through the midfield. On the return. Now Ali Peets. Across the halfway line. Dummied by the referee, Trigi. Attractive looking attack now by Creighton. Munn. Munn has been very active pushing forward on that near side from the right back position. Will Red slow to get up off the field. Corner kick now for Creighton. Munn is being subbed out, so she was set to take this corner kick. Just entering the match is Sydney Reeves, the junior midfielder, making her 14th appearance of the season. She will start by taking this left-footed corner kick. No option short, she'll hit the in-swinger. The wind could play havoc with this. Did not cross the byline. Now they're saying that it did. So Reeves replacing Arvison. Reeves just taking the corner kick. Brown replacing Fade. And the goal kick by Aaron Jarvis with the right foot into the wind. To the 36th minute we go. Ihimalu. Ihimalu has been active, trying to turn and send balls into the penalty area, but no one else really making that run, neither of the two strikers. Well, I think they're forcing it a little bit too much down the center. There's still a lot of width, like Munn should continue to try and run up this right side flank. There's Munn there making the serve. Keep the ball wide and really make Drake work. Still an opportunity for the Blue Jays in the attacking half. Pete's. Drake, Mallory McGannon, the junior, slowing things down, cautiously playing it back. Perhaps the mindset for Drake, with his win being such a factor, get to halftime scoreless, and then try to open things up when the wind will really aid the attack in the second half. Yeah, I would say that probably they're not, not, they are not, not trying to score in this half, but it is difficult with the win, and you're absolutely right. Sean, going into halftime, if it's 0-0, that, that's going to give them a distinct advantage in the second half. Melissa Wade for Allie Peets. Sydney Reeves, the substitute. Reeves couldn't win that ball. This could be on for Drake. Forward by Rao. The whistle blows. From the restart. Across the halfway line, back into the attacking half for the Creighton Blue Jays. Will Red. Forward for Katie Peets. It's Katie Peets committing that foul. Porton Casso will take this for Drake. One of our storylines that we focused on was Porton Casso on the left flank, and she's actually moved into one of the central defensive positions is one of the reasons why we haven't seen her trying to run down this flank. To go along with those 14 fouls in this match, the one yellow card. You knew it would be intense. Great rivalry between these two schools. Great from here in Omaha, Drake from Des Moines, Iowa. Top two schools in the Missouri Valley Conference again this year. 
The winner not only getting the MVC Tournament Championship, but a berth in the NCAA Field of 64. Both of these schools realize that unlikely that they will get an at-large bid if they cannot win this match. Ihimalu. This could be dangerous. Ihimalu. Ball rolling over the byline. Really well done by Lindsay Port and Casso. Shepherding that ball over the byline, not losing her nerve. Hey, Sean, the story with Lindsay Port and Casso, when she was a freshman in 99 at Columbine when the tragedy happened there. And one of the things that she said was so scary was her sister, who was a senior, was in the... She wasn't sure where she was, and it took three hours for her to find out where she was. She, she was safe, but she actually had left the cafeteria right before the shooting began. So very tragic for that community, but she said it brought the community together. She said it made us value so much more with our friends and family. It's truly an amazing story. Major League Soccer player Wes Hart, who had already graduated, but was also an alumni of Columbine High School. The opportunity for Drake through the midfield. Kristen Underwood. Both sides just not being cohesive through the midfield like they really have been all season. Again, Underwood. McGannon. Now the opportunity with Sarah Foote. Again, well done defensively by Yvonne Valentin. She's really having a strong match in central defense for the Blue Jays. Again, she sets the tempo for this Creighton defense. She's the lifeblood of this squad. And really, Foote had, her, had the card stacked against her in that. She was the only player up on the attack. Drake's got to do a better job of getting more supporting players around her. Drake looking for an opportunity. Closing stages of the first half. As you see top of your screen on ESPNU, we're scoreless in the 40th minute. Number one seat Drake versus number two seat Creighton from Morrison Stadium. Jenny Brown, the senior midfielder for Drake, loses out. Katie Peets. A smart ball by Peets. Here's Wilrek. She's done very well since subbing into this match. That ball rolling all the way over the byline. Jarvis thought about playing it, then thought, let it roll. Why take a chance with this wind to strike the goal kick? Make sure and stay with us at halftime on ESPNU. We'll hear the comments from both head coaches. We'll also take a look at the top schools. It's ranked by the NSCAA poll. Like coming up at halftime on ESPNU. Santrigi, the referee blowing his whistle, has done a really nice job in this match. Knows the intensity out there. For the most part, he's letting things go. Fine line, of course, Wendy is a referee in the championship final. You want to have free-flowing soccer, but you also don't want to let things get out of hand on every challenge. To this side netting is the ball across the byline. Again, a goal kicked Aaron Jarvis. You can see how much of a factor the win was there. You saw that header that should have been back across the face of the goal, and actually the win just took it up over the top of the goal. I think if Creighton can figure out a way to get some long-range shots, that's going to really help him. Considering that Jarvis has had this wind in her face the entire half, she really has not had much to do. Can this lack of shooting from distance by Creighton come back to haunt them in the second half? You would have to think that Drake is going to talk about this at halftime. Corbin Stone is going to encourage his players to shoot and shoot a lot. Again, the ball rolling over the byline. Again, a cool kick for Aaron Jarvis. Wendy, that really speaks volumes to Creighton and their attack. But again, I agree with you. They've got to try and get one before halftime. It's a school that's that proficient in goal scoring. Perhaps a mystery why they're not taking these shots from distance. It's not as though they're failing to get opportunities in the attacking half in the final 35 yards, just playing a lot of short balls through into the penalty area. When playing too much down the center, they still need to get the ball wide, pull the defense apart, and then try and get a shot on goal. Right-footed punt by Aaron Jarvis. Ball rolling into the Creighton bench area, over the touchline, and a throw into the Blue Jays. Allie Peets will have the throw in. Peets. Too high for Sidney Reeves. 
of Will Rich. He's done some good things in Sunday game. Melissa Wade. Error by Wade. One by Andrea Schmitz. Schmitz turns provider. Sinead Brown, the Canadian. Still on thinking about a shot, sending it through. Didn't get through to the goalkeeper. Still the opportunity, the shot, and well saved. Andrea Schmitz having a go, and Zimmerer is equal to it. Really, in my opinion, the best chance so far for either squad in this match. Without question. Zimmerer being called upon to make a difficult save, diving to her right. Great trying to keep the ball in the attacking half. Now back in their own half. Horton Casso. Ambitious ball forward. Trying to free Sinead Brown. This one right back by Creighton in the midfield. Emily Munn. Wilret, the sophomore. Munn on the return. Service intended through for Lindsey Vaught, the freshman who scored four goals this season. Run for Creighton. Will again be Sam Russell with the flip throw. We've now entered the 45th minute. Russell. Who could get ahead to it? Building up the shot. That's well off target. Perhaps last attacking opportunity for the Blue Jays in the first half. One more opportunity to push forward in the attack in this half for the Drake Bulldogs. Here's this earlier Drake attack, and you'll see number four, Schmitz, gets the ball on her left foot there. Zimmer has to make a near post save. Clearly the best chance that we've seen so far in the match. Ball rolling to the touchline. Didn't back across the touchline. Rink can get one more shot if they hurry. It's not going to happen off of that. Ball headed over the byline. The first half will end scoreless. It may go to 20 minutes of golden goal overtime. It may go to penalty kicks if we don't find a goal in the second half. We have to have a winner. This is the championship match of the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. The winner of this match not only gains this trophy, but they will gain entry to the NCAA field of 64. We're joined now by Creighton head coach Bruce Erickson. Coach, were you disappointed your team did not take more shots in the first half considering the strong wind that they're back in the attack? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, a lot of the first half was, was spent in front of their back four. Uh, and they're, you know, they're dropping off and we just didn't, didn't get enough possession in the middle uh, to be able to, uh, you know, get three, three versus four against them enough to get some shots off and to get end line and to get crosses. I mean, I'm happy that we got four or five of our long throws and we got a corner, but we've got to do a little bit more. Uh, regardless of having the win, we need to get some more chances. Speaking of chances, can you talk a little bit about Wilbur and how she's feeling? You know, she looks a little, she looks a step slower than Friday, and I think it's just getting used to, you know, playing with uh, a little bit of pain and, and, and just, you know, she's lacking just a little bit of mobility, which I think is affecting her speed and, and I know a couple times on that side of the field right in front of you guys, she had, uh, you know, she passed up really running at them in favor of, of maybe playing to, to another forward. And we want to try and get her to be a little bit more dangerous in the attacking third. Coach, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. The comments of Bruce Erickson, head coach of Creighton University. They are trying to defend their trophy. They won this tournament last year. Scoreless at the half, Creighton versus Drake. Championship final, Missouri Valley Conference Championship. The winner will gain entry into the NCAA Tournament Final. Wendy Gabauer Palladino, I'm Sean Wheelock. Glad you're with us on ESPNU. So these two schools figure that they must win to gain entry because they will likely will not get an at-large berth. But still, some schools can get an at-large berth in the field of 64. As we'll take a look now at the top 10 is ranked by the NSCAA poll. Well, and of course, a lot of familiar names. Uh, you know, Penn State has stayed at the top for a number of weeks. Portland, you can't discount uh, Sinclair, the Canadian phenomenal player. She's got 30 goals. Or going into this weekend, she had 30 goals. UNC uh, in the ACC championship 
playing right now back in uh, North Carolina and Tarpley and Kalupney are two big names. Jill Oaks for UCLA, Notre Dame, Thorlickson, and Florida State might be a bit of a sleeper. They've really emerged in the ACC. And look at Texas A&M, the host of the College Cup, sneaking into the number 10 spot. Last week they were at 11. So really, in my opinion, what's going to make a difference is the big-time players at these squads. All those players that I named are up for potential Player of the Year awards, and those type of players can carry their squads through to win a national championship. Stunning for Penn State, the second consecutive year losing their opening match in the Big Ten tournament when they had a 100% record going in. On Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 2 p.m. Pacific, Wendy Gabauer Paladino will be a part of the NCAA Tournament Selection Show. The 64 teams will be named. You can see that live on ESPN News. When we return on ESPNU, we'll look at the highlights from the first half. We're scoreless in the Missouri Valley Championship Final. Thank you. Off camera here? You're staying on camera here. We are. Will I be able to look at him real quick, Aim, before? Okay. Drake's out shooting him double. So is this just, just traffic me here, please? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, when we come back, it's still not the kickoff, right? It's still, yeah. Yeah. Off the back end of the highlights is the stats page, right, Amy? Thank you. I'm going to ask you who this scroll line favors. Is that fair? I'll ask you who this scroll line favors. Yeah, it's just I'm having a tough time uh, with the Drake with Drake's numbers. I can't hardly see him. So I'm gonna be a little more vague in reference. Oh. Perhaps a surprising scoreline: zero zero. Number two versus number one for the championship. The Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. Drake, three-time defending conference regular season champions, looking to win this tournament for the first time. The Creighton Blue Jays looking to defend this championship. This scoreline at halftime, 0-0. Does this favor one of these two sides going into half number two? Well, in my opinion, neither team has dominated in the first half, and I think really Drake is going to have the favor with the wind of their back if they can find a way to take some long-range shots. Creighton really didn't take as good advantage of that as they could. And going into, hi into halftime, 0-0, zero, zero, I think favors Drake. And really we saw kind of some end-to-end, -end, a lot of physical play because so much was on the line. Obviously a conference championship and an NCAA bid. And really, uh, Drake had actually out shooting Creighton 6-3, to three, so they had the better of the chances. Here Zimmer comes up, makes a big save. We saw some good playmaking, but again, not a very good change to the point of the attack. And this is the opportunity here by Schmitz. A near post, left-footed shot. Good save by Zimmer, and again, 0-0 at halftime. The one stat that truly matters, balls in the back of the net, and she just said, Wendy, 0-0. Zero, zero. Yeah, and, and again, I reiterate there that Drake has outshot Creighton 6-3. Pretty interesting storyline, because they did have the, the better of the chances, and the best chance in the match, but neither, neither team finding the back of the net. Stay with us, everyone, on ESPNU. We're back with more from the championship final of the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament.
Turning to a beautiful day for soccer at Morrison Stadium. The temperature now above 50 degrees. We're at halftime, the Missouri Valley Conference Championship. Scoreless number one, Drake versus number two, Creighton. Coming up next on ESPNU, catch the Big East Field Hockey Championship. The Villanova Wildcats take on the Yukon Huskies at the stadium complex on the campus of Rutgers University. The Big East Field Hockey Championship coming up next right here on ESPNU. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. When we return on ESPNU, the second half kickoff, scoreless Creighton versus Drake. Known head coach of the Drake Bulldogs. Coach, scoreless through the opening 45 minutes. Overall, do you feel pretty good about things? Yeah, you know, I think the first two minutes when uh, we tried to play out of the back and had a mistake there, I think that really kind of demonstrated that to the players that uh, maybe we can't play out of the back, and I think they started to worry about that, and our game plan was try to swing the ball out of the back, connect passes, and they kind of got scared to do that after that first two minutes, and, it, and it's affected us throughout the match then. Coach, what do you think is going to make the difference for you guys in this second half? Play soccer, connect passes, try to be able to swing the ball and change the point of attack out of the back. If we can do that and then maybe split the difference between gaps and seams uh, from their midfielders and try to connect with a central player, um, I think we'll be, we'll be fine. But we can't just keep putting the ball in the air and, and make hopeful passes. Coach, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Head coach of the Drake Bulldogs, Corbin Stone. Moments away from the second half kickoff. Creighton in the all-white, the number two seed, attacking from the right to the left. That's into the wind in the second half. Drake in the black and white will be attacking. Now from the left to the right. Wendy, may we see Drake really try to open things up here, not just because of the win, but because they are the number one seed. They're the reigning regular season champions to try to finish this match in the opening dozen minutes. Well, you could tell from Coach Scott's comments that his team uh, was nervous. And, um, and although they've won the regular season, they have not found a way in these last four years to win this championship game. So really a lot of pressure on him. But he's just really trying to get him to settle down. And he really backed up a lot of what we've been saying on the air that they're not playing the ball wide. Neither team is, really. And he wants him to try and settle the ball down, play soccer, as, as he defined it. That's the voice of Wendy Gabauer Palladino. I'm Sean Wheelock. We're glad you're with us on ESPNU. Final day before we go into the NCAA tournament, the selection tomorrow on ESPN News. Join Wendy for that, 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific. All of the conference tournaments concluding today around Division I women's college soccer. The winner of this into the field of 64 is a representative from the MVC. The loser likely will not get an at-large bid. That's what's at stake in this match. The number one ranked team, Penn State, we saw them at the little halftime bit that we did with the top ten teams, but they've got a player, Weimer, who is, is amazing. Interestingly, you know, they lost in the first round of their conference tournament, but that gives them a distinct advantage because it goes down as a tie. They lost in penalty kicks, so it's probably going to shuffle the top four a little bit, but probably won't bump them out of that top four. But they've gotten rest when all these other teams have been playing in conference championships and in a lot of cases three games to win it all in a span of five days, which is really, really tough. There's a lot of discussion about whether or not conference championships will be done away with in some of the conferences. I know the ACC is discussing that at this point. Not every conference has a championship. Some of them send their regular season champions. What's your feeling on that as a player? You were a three-time All-America at college. What is your feeling about that as a player? Well, there was so much uh, pride in playing for your conference championship. And when I played back in the ACC, we actually, that tournament started in my sophomore year. Um, we did, in fact, wasn't in existence before that. But it is really tough because there's so much parity in the game. And uh, a lot of times, well, I take the ACC, for example, in that top 10, there were three teams in the top 10. So you got to figure that three teams in the top 10 are beating each other up over a span of five days and if you have any injuries or you have uh, if you don't just a general fatigue to get ready for the opening playoff game next weekend it, it's tough so um, I can understand but then in, in, in another case for example if you know Drake here wins the regular season but if they don't win today against Creighton they don't go so you know it's it's a lot of discussion around it and you could debate all day long throw in from Melissa Nelson the striker it's a promising ball forward. 
for Oswald and over the byline. You see the husband of Bailey Wilberts, Brent Wilberts. He was an all-American track star. Married very young to his college sweetheart. He's been out for a year from college. Apparently he's the, he calls himself the soccer mom of the team. He brings cookies and she found herself a good one, didn't she? He likes to bake and bring cookies. From the corner kick from Oswald. Sent out of the penalty area. Drake already looking a bit more dangerous in the second half than they did for all of the opening 45 minutes. Andrea Schmitz assessing her options. Think about a cross, Schmitz. There is Bailey Wilberts with her husband looking on. All the way forward to the keeper on one hop, Zimmer. Difficulty with that kick from Zimmer, the wind completely knocking that down, and she'll have a second go. Something goalkeepers obviously have to be cautious about. On the punts, on the drop kicks, on the goal kicks. Again, not much there on the right-footed punt. Well, you, that's the wind. It's just killing the ball. I wish if we'd had a little more time, that would have been the next question for Coach Stone to do, you talk about how he addressed that with his team. I'd love to, I think we'll see pretty early on here in the second half whether he told him to you know, take half chances. I know one of his focuses was just in general for his team to play good soccer. We're in the 50th minute, scoreless in this match. Number two seed Creighton versus number one seed Drake. Championship final Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. Of course, clock counting down, college soccer. Opposite of the FIFA standard. If we're still level after 90 minutes, we will have 20 minutes of golden goal overtime. If a goal is not scored, then the winner will be determined on penalty kicks. Anyone is eligible to take PKs. You don't have to have appeared in the match or be on the field. If the second overtime concludes, you simply have to be activated onto the roster. Long way to go, a lot of soccer to be played though before we can think about overtime and PKs. Certainly neither of these schools are thinking about it right now. Obviously they want to win it here in the second half. Does this favor this scoreless situation? Does this favor Creighton though because they're the underdog coming in, because they're the number two seed, that maybe they're building in confidence and maybe Drake is starting to worry? Well, let me tell you, if they score a goal here against this wind, it's going to be huge. I mean, they ha they, that's what they need, I think, in the, in the beginning of this, early in this second half. Drake is younger from, the, from a historical standpoint, even though their seniors are leading this team. They're younger, and they don't have as much, as much championship experience. Marcy Gantz, that's effective with the right foot. Very nice service. And easy for the goalkeeper, Jarvis. Kept her concentration. See what Jarvis can do into the wind if she elects the punt. Indeed she does. They're vividly illustrated the effects of the wind right now. Sam Russell for Creighton. Munn had a touch. Or Kosso sending forward. Better stuff now from the Bulldogs. Oswald all the way through to the goalkeeper. Drake though looking ever more dangerous as this second half progresses. Four by Port and Casso. Again, she's not playing out on that flank as we had, had saw in, in the beginning of the game. She lined up out there. She's playing more of a central defender. Faden intended for Andrea Schmitz, too strong. Over the touch line, a throw into Creighton. Tuesday night, the college basketball season tips off on ESPNU with a doubleheader from the 2K Sports Coaches versus Cancer Classic. First at 6 p.m. Eastern, the Cornell Big Red take on St. Francis of Pennsylvania. And at 8 p.m. Eastern, the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats face Jerry McNamara in the Syracuse Orange. 2K Sports Coaches versus Cancer Classic on ESPNU Tuesday night. For more information, log on to ESPN.com.
Drake Bulldogs will take the throw in. Nikki Faden, the junior midfielder. She's been active in this match. Opportunity turning, looking for the shot sent away by Valentin, who's really been stellar in central defense throughout this match for great. Again, breaking up any chance of an opportunity on target for the Drake Bulldogs. It's when Valentin's been at her best, defending in her own penalty area. Vandalo screams for a foul to be called on Vandalo. Did not come. Zantrigi, the referee, not interested. Again, Valentin. Mallory McGannon for Drake. McGannon again, and there's the foul. Now the referee stopping the clock, and this could be our second booking of the match. Just a verbal warning, stopping the clock, but just a verbal warning. Nice job of officiating by Trigi. And again, he's just doing a good job of trying to keep this match under control. Looking to turn on the opportunity. Now turning provider. Shot deflected, never got through on the left foot. Again, and having a crack from distance. Great continuing in the attacking half, continuing to apply pressure. Better ball this time, Daniel Oswald, all the way through to the keeper, Zimmerer. Interesting situation for Bruce Erickson, feeling as though he has two number one goalkeepers in Zimmerer, Kristen Casey. Again, making that decision at the team breakfast today. Right back on the attack. Bouncing off the corner flag, but over the touchline rather than the byline. You know, we had some discussion um, a few moments ago about the uh, conference tournaments and the discussion, you know, debate about whether or not they should, you know, have conference tournaments. But I, you can tell right now, in my opinion, that the fatigue of the of the games that they played a couple days ago really seems to be impacting them. Neither team is really settling the ball, ball down and playing the type of soccer that they want to play possession of. Just not seeing two and three uh, passes consistently strung together. It'll help them if they can do that, change the point of the attack, try and, try and use the width on the field, let the ball do the work for them a little bit more. Fade. One-way traffic at the moment. Listen, Nelson can tee up. Opportunity for Schmidt. You can see they're almost queuing up. They're trying to pull the ball to their better foot. And they're trying to load up shots. Credit to Creighton, though. They're sensing this. On the throw in for Nikki Fade. Plays the return. Deflected over the byline. Getting off of Marcy Gann, so a corner kick for Drake. Be the right foot of Danielle Oswald. No option short. She's going to hit the in swinger. To the near post through the six yard box and over the byline. That's going to be another corner kick. That was a flick by the defensive player. Look at Yvonne Valentin. Senior has really been good today. Playing in central of the defense. Playing as the sweeper in this back four. Oswald needs to focus on trying to pull the ball out five or ten more yards because the wind's going to take it in right into Zimmer. She's got to pull it out. Now she's doing an, an outswinger. That's good. No option short, so there is the outswinger from Danielle Oswald. And the shot deflected over the crossbar. Nearly an own goal. Very nearly an own goal. And Allie, Allie Pete's the player that was trying to clear that ball. Wow. Got really lucky there. Here's a nice overhead look at it. And there's Pete's right there making that clear. Boy, she almost tucked it into the upper 90. If she hadn't touched it, it looked like it might have been going in the net. Great look from the production truck, seeing that shot behind the goal. From the corner kick. It's still Creighton. Trying to defend Wilberts. 
Creighton right now is just packing it in, playing with their back to goal. Trying to hold off this Drake attack and look for a way to counter. Just looking for a way to get within 35 yards. Triggy blowing his whistle, detecting a foul, so a restart to Drake. Vandalo will take this with the right foot. Vandalo. That's a dangerous ball sent in. Finally away by Valentin. Who else? Ball rolling over the touchline on one hawk. Again throw into Drake. Nervous moments for the Blue Jays right now. Bulldogs looking dangerous. Pushing forward on this attack. Better pressure than they had in the entire first half. Now here's the counterattack for Creighton. The foul from behind. This is going to be a booking, our second of the match. Mallory McGannon shown the yellow card. Lindsay Vaught was running with the ball. Great, great pace there, trying to produce a counterattack, and she just gets leveled from behind there by Mallory McGannon. McGannon booked in the 59th minute, first yellow card against Drake. Alyssa Wade of Creighton was booked in the 10th minute for their only yellow card. From the restart for Creighton, Marcy Gans, the freshman. And that shot off target. Only Munn having a go with the right foot. Nice idea. It's Munn pushing all the way forward from the right back position. Two substitutions now being made by Bruce Erickson for Creighton. Brennan and Arvison back into this match. They were both in the starting 11th. Vandalo taking this short from 18 yards off of the goal line. Long searching ball. Intended for Andrea Schmitz, who stepped up her work rate in the second half. Touched by Sam Russell, throw into Drake. Aguda. Now Oswald. Hold down and we play on. Lauren Haguda sending forward. Oswald. For Melissa Nelson if she hurries. Nelson does well to control along the touchline. Has an option back with Rao. What about pulling to the left foot for a shot? Mallory McGannon. Oswald, straight through to the keeper. Zimmer did well holding her line. 61st minute scoreless. Championship match, Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. Three-time defending regular season champion Drake, the number one seed against the tournament holder and number two seed Creighton. We are on the campus of Creighton University. State-of-the-art Morrison Stadium in Omaha, Nebraska. Thank you with us, everyone, on ESPNU. I'm Nico Bauer Paladino. I'm Sean Wheelock. We will have a winner to this match. Still scoreless after 90, 20 minutes of golden goal overtime. If you don't find the golden goal, will be determined by penalty kicks. Wendy, I'm starting to think there just may be one goal out there today. Yeah, there might not be more than that. I, I agree with you. This match doesn't have the feel of, of, of either team opening it up. That shot off target. Having to go with the left foot was Danielle Oswald on the corner kick from Fade. Corner kicks are a great way for Drake to convert, but a little left-footed shot there just wide. Really not that dangerous. You really have to put those on target, don't you, from that distance? Yeah, you do. I mean, obviously, you have to get them on target to find the back of the net as well. Sometimes it's just about putting them on the face and maybe a teammate is in there and they did not have another player in there. But sometimes it's just a matter of getting them on the face and for a flick for, for an opportunity. Rauda Oswald, who plays forward to the byline. That ball crossing as Andrea Schmitz received. 
Cool kick to Valerie Zimmerer. Zimmer not taking her own goal kicks into the wind. Emily Munn, the junior, will take this. Munn, when completely killing that right-footed goal kick, then over the touch line. Drake getting the better of it from the possession, from the chances here in the second half. Taking full advantage of this wind, gusting up to 25 miles an hour to the back of their attack, yet we're still scoreless. of a handball, unintentional, and we play on. Organic, nicely done. Now Oswald, she's really gotten a lot more active in the attack. Rolling over the touchline. You know, really the biggest problem that Creighton's having is even getting the ball over the midstripe, and we haven't even mentioned their front runners in the last few minutes. As far as touching the ball, you can see there, Himalu is coming back try and gather the ball. Creighton has made two tournament appearances in the NCAAs, both losing in the first round, 2002 and again last year. Last year getting in to the NCAA tournament by defeating Drake in Des Moines, Iowa, three goals to one. Championship final of the MVC. Revenge, obviously a motivating factor for Drake. So a culmination for these seniors. They started this program as freshmen in 2002. What a great payoff. To make the first ever appearance in school history in the NCAA tournament, Wendy. They should be so proud of the success that they've had in their careers. I tell you, for, for a four-year program and for the success that they've achieved, it's, a, it's absolutely amazing. And you know, these players, when they came in to start the program, they were nervous, but they were up to the challenge. They were excited about it. Not many players have this opportunity and can say that they've played in their second year in the row in the championship game. Corbin Stone has done a great job. He's three, three consecutive years picked as the Missouri Valley Coach of the Year. Truly amazing that in the second year in program history, they won the Missouri Valley regular season championship. Creighton with Alley Peets. Arvison. Too strong on the touch. Just as the attack was starting the build for Creighton in the Drake half, it's snuffed out just like that. Sam Trigge, the referee, blowing his whistle. Drake will now have the restart. Vandalo with the right foot. Strong kick by Vandalo. Melissa Nelson giving chase to the byline. Crossed before she struck it with the right foot. Goal kick again to Zimmerer. Zimmerer's been very busy in the second half, but it's mainly been picking up the ball after it's crossed the byline. She's not had to do that much in terms of shot coming, shots coming her way. Horton Casso. High for Andrea Schmitz. Schmitz again on a second effort. Schmitz, she's looked dangerous in the second half. That's a lovely ball through. The shot that's deflected through to the goalkeeper. Schmitz getting it through to Oswald. The shot took a deflection. Zimmer had to be careful and kept her nerve. Corbin Stone looking on. Perhaps mildly frustrated, although his side getting probably 90% of the possession in the attacking half here in half number two. Throw into Drake. And the throw in by Lauren Haguda. Fade. Get a throw in for the Drake Bulldogs. Again, Haguda. Oswald. Can turn and control. Way by Sam Russell. Trying to switch the field. Pushing and shoving now. Nearly getting out of hand. 
Nelson for Drake and Arvison for Creighton. For a moment, it looked like they might throw a punch here. Yeah, they were going at it here. A little retaliation and, and retaliation back. I guess it looked pretty even, so the ref decided, oh, he's going to give a card now. Arvison's getting a yellow card. You know, she, she was the initial player that got fouled. Arvison was. You see, she had the ball there. Actually, she got upset because she had the ball taken from her. But because of her retaliation is the reason she got that card. So third booking of the match. Then Arvison showing the yellow card in the 67th minute. Now into the 68th minute. Still looking for the first goal. Very well could prove to be the match winner, the only goal. The VC Tournament Championship at stake. The birth in the NCAA field of 64 at stake. It'll be the first ever for Drake, the third ever second consecutive for Creighton. If you've joined us late, both of these schools sensing that their only way in is to win this match. Likely they will not be an at-large selection. Drake 11 victories, six losses, two draws on the year. Creighton 11 victories, five losses, three draws on the year. But in the great depth of women's college soccer, that's probably not going to get you in as an at-large. Well, one by Sam Russell, reading that very well. And completely dispossessed by Bailey Wilberts. Obviously her husband would have to be pleased on that. Ball sent out by Valentin. Scoreless on ESPNU. Number two, Creighton versus number one, Drake. We're back with the conclusion of this second half from Omaha. We've had intensity in this match between these two great rivals. We've had opportunities. We've had tough fouls and hard challenges, and we've had shots. We're still looking for the first goal of this match, which could very well be enough to claim that trophy. The winner of this, getting the hardware that represents the tournament championship from the Missouri Valley Conference, and of course, our underlying storyline, getting into the NCAA tournament. We've tracked the touches and the shots of these two players, and Schmitz has had the better with two shots. Of course, all those touches, they got to get the shots on the face of the goal in order to have that scoring opportunity. Which one of these players is going to make the difference? 
Again, remember, if we don't have a winner through the end of the second half, 20 minutes of golden goal overtime, and if no golden goal is to be found, penalty kicks. Still not thinking about that yet, because these two schools aren't. They're thinking about winning this match outright in the second half. Drake getting the much better of things, at least through possession in the second half, although the wind has really died down in the last five minutes. Perfect example of that is we haven't seen Sam Russell use her flip throw as much. I think maybe she might have used it one time this half of that. Chelsea McKenzie, the substitute will take this for Creighton. McKenzie, very strong with the right foot. That illustrates how the wind has died down, getting all the way through into the penalty area. Suspicion of a handball on Russell when we play on. Ahimelu, trying to load up, still looking for an angle, still looking for an angle. Finally playing through. Katie Brennan. Now a counter-attacking opportunity for Drake. Bulldogs will have this throw in. Lauren Hakuda. Sarah Foote. Still foot, did well. Fade, key to the midfield. Promising now, Andrea Schmitz. Wilson making the run centrally into the penalty area. Shot deflected immediate, immediately. Second shot, side netting outside of the goal post. Zimmer had to be cautious, did well to protect the near post. One of the things that was so great about that attack was getting the ball to Schmitz's foot, and she was out wide, so she was stretching the defense a bit, but again, her teammates We've seen this a couple times, have not worked really, really hard to get in and support her in around the box. I mean, they're not going to get a lot of chances, and if they're feeling like they've got a chance, they better hurry up and get their, get their rear ends in the box. 32 in her career, their nine goals leads the team this season. Stellar four years at Drake for the senior striker, Andrea Schmitz. If she can score a tenth this season, that just might be the biggest of her career. Honestly, how, Wendy, could a goal be bigger than one that would send Drake through to their first ever NCAA tournament appearance? It would absolutely be the biggest goal, that's for sure. Drake looking for that goal now with Katie Brennan. Brennan looking to cross, still Brennan trying to do a step over, didn't work. Set to wait quickly. I hope Buda. Great impressively continuing this attack with Sam Russell. Andrea Schmitz. Schmitz losing out in the central midfield. Forward by McGannon. Katie Brennan for Creighton. She suddenly really stepped up her work rate. Ihimalu. She can do some special things here. Ihimalu. Down in the penalty area, but it's Ihimalu who commits the foul. She pulled down Lindsay Portcasso. Himalu's really taking it up another level here. You can see her pressuring the defense, trying to turn the corner there to get a cross off. Lifted plate through the shot, and finish! 1-0 Creighton, and they have struck. First of the season for Greta Arvison, and it's massive for the junior midfielder. Well, we talked about it on the Drake side, that the midfielders weren't working hard to get in the box when they would have an opportunity to support their front runners. And Arvison redefines that. She works hard to get up. Perf beautiful, beautiful, perfectly placed, one-touch right-footed shot. Oh, that's a great view of it right there. Side netting. I love the half chance. She doesn't take an extra touch. She just tucks it right in that side netting. And to beat Jarvis, that is tough to do. And the only way to do it is side netting. But the thing I like most about it, two things. One, she works so hard to get back, up, get up into the attack to support her front runners. Because in this match, we've seen there's only going to be very few opportunities to win the game. And secondly, I like the half chance. She took it one touch, just tucked it in the side netting. 73rd minute. 
Will that be enough to see Creighton through to this championship into their second straight NCAA tournament? They've scored against the run of play. They've done it without Will Ritz being on the pitch in this second half. Again, we heard from Coach Erickson that he felt like her knee was really bothering her. She was a bit slow, more slow than she was in, just a little bit slower than she was in the semifinal. Corner kick now for Drake. One opportunity in the second half for Creighton. That's Arvison, and she makes no mistake. Cool as you like with that finish from 17 yards out. On the corner kick from Thaden. Thaden again will have a second effort. Again with the right foot. Too high for McGannon. McGannon. Tenaciously marked down by four players for Creighton. Blue Jays again looking to counterattack. Horton Casso putting an end to that. Vandalo. This has to be nervous moments now for Drake. Will they be upset? Is the number one seed in the championship final by Creighton for the second consecutive year? That's what's developing right now. Into the 75th minute. Creighton leading 1-0. Fade. Well, we talked about the contribution of the youth on this Creighton side, and there's Kansas. Perfect ball straight across the box. And a beautiful finish there by Creighton, number 16, Arvison. Tucks it in the back of the net against the run of play. They have not crossed the midfield too much in the second half. The wind has been a huge factor. I'll tell you one of the things that's going to continue to be a factor for Creighton is the play of number 21 in the back, Yvonne Valentin. She is awesome back there, and she needs to hold her defense together under a lot of pressure by Drake. For me, she's the best player in this match today. Here she goes for a header, and she just goes with passion after it. She's not, not afraid of anything back there. She's one of their co-captains. Creighton really has no choice but to start, a to start to pack things in now, don't they, Wendy? Well, I think, you know, they don't want to expose themselves because of, this, of the win, the factor of the win. So they're not going to aimlessly send players up onto the attack. I think they need to play smart. Obviously, Drake has to keep their composure. They have to be able to visualize a way back. They have to feel the bitter sting of disappointment right now. They get goal down on the score sheet. Bailey Wilberts. Could turn five yards off the byline. Katie Brennan. I Himalu. 2v3 in this counterattack. I Himalu. That's where you're not going to see Creighton commit players forward. Back for Valentin. Yvonne Valentin. Over the touchline, one of her rare mistakes today. Drake will have a throw in. Substitution being made. So Laguda exits this match. Daniel Oswald back in. Started in central defense. Creighton in a 4-3-3. Might we see they change their formation, bring one of those strikers back in the dying minutes of this match, as long as the scoreline holds 1-0 in their favor. Seeing the urgency now from Drake, Bailey Wilberts. Straight up by Nelson. Long searching ball. This is onside. The flag stays down for Sarah Foote. But looking to cross there. Perhaps should have turned a bit quicker. Back on the throw in. Wilberts. And immediately by Yvonne Valentin, the senior. And I think that's where you're seeing Creighton being very conservative, Wendy, not getting those numbers forward with those long balls in the center circle. This could be on for the Bulldogs. 
the byline, crossing. The corner kick, one for Creighton and rather for Drake. Danielle Oswald, the junior defender, will take the corner kick. No option short. She'll try to drive to the back post, this right-footed outswinger. Centrally in the penalty area, did not get through. Wilberts. Rao. Off of Oswald. Now the counter-attack for the Blue Jays. Katie Brennan. Christine Wilret. All the way through to the goalkeeper, Aaron Jarvis. With Wilwitz returned to the match, she's actually settled into the midfield, which is, in my opinion, a very conservative play on Coach Erickson's part. Four by Port Picasso. Drake has got to start to think about taking chances, getting additional players forward into the attack. Schmitz. Opportunity for Oswald. Oswald's teeing up this shot, and that's off target. Coming up next on ESPNU, immediately following our match, you can catch the Big East Field Hockey Championship. The Villanova Wildcats take on the Yukon Huskies, the stadium complex on the campus of Rutgers University. The Big East Field Hockey Championship, coming up next right here on ESPNU. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. To the 80th minute we go, as you see top of your screen on ESPNU. Creighton, the number two seed, defending MVC tournament champion. Leading one goal to zero versus the number one seed. Three-time defending regular MVC champion. Great Bulldogs. Trouble of being knocked, really in danger of being knocked out for the second consecutive year in the MVC tournament final by Creighton. But Arvison's first of the season in the 73rd minute. That's the difference on the score sheet. By Himalu. All the way forward for a second opportunity. Quickly out of the penalty area that time by Elise Rao. And over the byline. Second Creighton goal, this is game, set, match. Creighton realizes that, Drake realizes that, Wendy. That whole attack really was created by Lindsay Vaught. She's just a French freshman, five foot four, wearing number 14. She had two chances there, and then the final one was by Chelsea McKenzie. McKenzie covering well at the top of the box. In your estimation, Drake has to push forward now. They have to take chances. They've got to take some chances, absolutely. And they've really got, in my opinion, a, a 12th man on the field with the wind at their back. I and mean, they've got to really work hard. As Coach Stone said in his interview, play good soccer. They need to be patient, let the ball do the work for them. But they're really not changing the point of the attack very well to spread Creighton's defense out. And they've got to spread the defense out because number 21 for Creighton, Yvonne Valentin, is the glue that is holding them together. That's Valentin just hitting that with the right foot straight up. Valentin commits that foul. And the clock is stopped for this injury. Talked about Valentin coming in with, with a presence, and here she's trying to make up for her miss, miss clear there, and she actually takes down Oswald for Drake. So the clock is stopped, as you see in the 82nd minute. Just as I was mentioning, the great play of Valentin, she miscleared it, and then she followed up and went in way too aggressively there. Takes down Drake's number 12, Danielle Oswald. Hopefully she's going to be okay. No booking on that challenge on Valentin, just the foul. For Creighton in the final eight minutes, what is Bruce Erickson going to tell his players? Don't take any undue, unnecessary chances. As a matter of fact, if I were him, I would drop another player back into the midfield just to win those second balls. Maybe even drop a player farther back just sitting above the defense because when those balls are floating in there, they're tough to clear. You saw that with Valentin's last chance. Oswald is going to have to be subbed out. As the trainer was called on to the field. She is eligible to return on this substitution in the second half. Substitution is made. Sinead Brown, the Canadian, coming back into this match, so we stay 11 v. 11.
Brown will push forward. Vandalo will take this on the restart from that foul. Vandalo, good penetrating ball into the penalty area. Sent out immediately with authority. Marvis in the goal score, doing well defensively there. Now Sarah Foot for Drake, couldn't find a way through into the penalty area. Thaden. Easily back for the goalkeeper. As much possession as Drake had, Wendy, in the opening 25 minutes of the second half, Zimmer really, quite frankly, did not have a lot to do. Again, I think it boils down to the fact that they're, they're getting in and around the box, but they're not developing the play very well. Again, they're going to need to spread out this Creighton defense. We've been talking about Valentin, also Emily Munn on the right side. She's played an awesome game. Every time she touches the ball, she calms it down. Good professional move there by the amateur college player, Katie Brennan, wasting some time. Brennan. And through to the goalkeeper. Emily was coming on strong. Jarvis kept her nerve. Jarvis can't be faulted on the goal she conceded. An absolute cracking shot by Greta Arvison in the 73rd minute. That's the difference on the score sheet. 83rd minute. Great the number two seed, a goal to the good versus the number one seed, Drake. Is there a way back for Drake? Can they find a way through to level this match at a goal apiece? Drake again, pushing forward Nelson. Trying to get more players forward into the attack, hovering around the penalty area. Rolling over the byline meekly. You know, we haven't heard a lot from Andrea Schmitz in these last 10 or 15 minutes for Drake. Again, she has two game-winning goals this season. She's the goals and points leader. In my opinion, if Drake's going to score, she needs to be involved. She's got to find ways to get the ball. She's hanging out there on the left side pretty quietly right now. Three substitutions being made for Creighton, one for Drake. Kristen Underwood, the senior striker, looking for the Bulldogs. And to get more attack-minded, dying stages of the second half. Drake desperately searching for the equalizer. Drake desperately trying to hold it off. And Himalu coming all the way back, market. It's a sign, I think, of the tactics right now of Creighton. Yeah, their whole, whole team is on the other side of the mid strike. Goalkeeper is out, spills down in the penalty area. Nervous moments there. Zimmer coming well off of her line. Bit fearlessly by the sophomore goalkeeper, Valerie Zimmerer. Ball's going into the box here. Zimmerer comes out and makes a big play and, and really try and teach forwards. You got to get up and get off the ground. Instead, her, le her legs were planted there, and she took the best of that. Sarah Foote coming in. 50-50 ball, Foote and Zimmerer. The foul going against the onrushing striker, Sarah Foote of Drake. So the restart in the penalty area, taken by Yvonne Valentin. Way by Valentin with the right foot. One area lead by Sarah Foote. the halfway line with Christine Wilret. This could be on. The shot straight on target. Good burst from Creighton. You know, that's just a little bit of freshman inexperience there because Deleu's got to get, just touch the ball and carry it into the box. She's too far out to beat Jarvis, who has settled back into the face of her goal. Get the player on your back. All they can do to stop you is foul you, maybe you get a penalty kick. 85th minute. Championship final, Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. The number two seed defending tournament champion, Creighton leading 1-0 versus Drake, the number one seed. Three-time defending MVC regular season champion. The winner of this match through is the MVC representative to the NCAA Tournament of 64. Wendy Gebauer Palladino, I'm Sean Wheelock. Glad you're with us on ESPNU. We're going to have a thrilling finish to this match. Creighton sensing the upset right now. Looking to take out Drake in the MVC Tournament Final for the second consecutive year. Last year by a 3-1 scoreline in Des Moines. 
here at Creighton's home stadium, Morrison Stadium in Omaha, leading one goal to the good, 1-0. Got to have a sense of urgency now for Drake. They can't waste time on putting the ball back in play on throw-ins and on restarts. Straight to Emily Munn. Drake forward with Underwood. Second half substitute. Has to be nervous moments now for the Bulldogs. Unbeaten through the regular season. Been winning in the semifinal versus Illinois State 2-1. Emily Munn is the player that's down over there on the right side. And again, the clock is stopped. The official time is kept by the scorekeeper, of course, in NCAA soccer. The referee has the ability to stop the clock. As Sam Trigi did right there. My guess is she's cramping. A little fatigue setting in. She's had a great match. Been so solid off that right side. Every time she's touched the ball, she has settled her entire team down. Very good pace on her serves. On a full Canadian Youth International. She's really been instrumental on this back line for Creek. On challenging there. Bailey Wilberts. Drake looking more dangerous. Trying to turn. Wilbert, and that's why. Smart, very smart job by the goalkeeper, Valerie Zimmerer. Letting that ball go wide. She can waste 20, 25 seconds putting this ball back in play. Now the clock has stopped. Because of the substitutions, the clock has stopped. Zimmerer again will not take the goal kick. Instead, it's Valentin. I'm great, Wendy. I think I'm putting nine behind the ball at this point from the rest of the way through, as long as this 1-0 scoreline holds. Absolutely. Keep playing professionally from a clock-wasting standpoint. Every chance you get, throw in, goal kicks, anything. Try and milk some time off the clock and then play really smart team defense. Don't take any undue risks. There's two forwards up top right now. If I were them, I'd be hustling back in the midfield to help my team out. Roll it down. Balls for a foul from the crowd here in Omaha, and we play on. Max shot with the right foot, well off target. Hit and hope from Andrea Schmitz. I think thoughts of glory there, but misstruck with the right foot. 88th minute. Will that one goal be enough? Greta Arvison in the 73rd. First of the year for the junior not have come at a bigger opportunity. In all fairness, Creighton has had just one opportunity in the second half, and it was finished by Arvison. They've completely been outshot by Drake. But again, they've made the most of their opportunity. That's a smart ball, too. Oh, offside's call. Offside flag is up. Again, this is where you have to have urgency from Drake. They can't be walking the ball back to place it. Our clock top of the screen on ESPNU is in sync with the official match clock. Remember, no stoppage time. When it hits triple zero, that is full time. Virgilio, the substitute, trying to get something going. Down in the penalty area. The shot, and that's deflected. Still not sent away by Creighton. You know, the player that made that defensive play was Valentin. She was on the ground twice, sliding to try and get her body in front of that shot. Lifted forward, headed down. Drake throwing everybody forward, looking for the equalizer desperately. Turning to the angle, couldn't get this shot through. That shot coming in, blocked. Underwood couldn't get it away. Oh boy, and look at the player number 21. Again, Valentin making the play. She's been awesome today. Remind you that that was Carrie, was Schmidt, Andrea Schmidt, who was on the ball there. Substitution, so the clock stopping again in the 90th minute. 
from the goal kick by Emily Munt. The foul detected there. Great will want to waste as much time as possible, and I would think take it to the corner flag rather than into the penalty area. For Katie Peets, loses out. One last chance for Drake, and this could be it. Into the attacking half, ball rolls over the touchline from the throw-in. Danielle Oswald. Virgilio trying to find a way through, can't do so. Von Valentin. Valentin. Smartly sending it out of touch. There's the urgency now from Drake. Too quickly on the throw-in for the referee as the substitution was already up, so the clock stopping once again. Drake will have one last opportunity. Melissa Nelson will take the throw in. Now Nelson is going to push forward. Vandela will have the throw in. The senior defender. Last chance for Drake. Last chance for these seniors that started this program four years ago. Creighton is going to win this match on this run. Katie Peets. That is it. Full time has been reached. And Creighton has upset the number one ranked Drake Bulldogs. And for the second consecutive year, the Blue Jays are champions of the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. 1-0 the final. Fantastic effort by Creighton, Wendy. They saw the one opportunity and they finished. And Greta Artisan getting her first goal. She's a junior. I tell you, Drake outshot Creighton 22 to seven, but it was Arvison who came up big off of an assist from freshman sensation Marcy Gans. Arvison finding the side netting. Really the only way you're gonna beat Jarvis. Bitter disappointment for Drake, but still a fantastic year as they did reach the final and they won their third consecutive MVC regular season championship. And for Creighton, their second consecutive MVC tournament championship gives them their third berth in the NCAA tournament. They won in 2002, they went last year, and they're going again this year. Congratulations to the Creighton Blue Jays. They will represent the Missouri Valley Conference in the NCAA field of 64. The match winner from Greta Arvison, the junior midfielder, her first of the year in the 73rd minute. That proved the difference on the score sheet. 1-0, Creighton defeats Drake. Coming up next on ESPNU, the Big East Field Hockey Championship, Villanova versus UConn. For Wendy Gabauer Palladino and our entire ESPNU crew, I'm Sean Wheelock. Thanks for watching the MVC Conference Tournament Championship on ESPNU. Music swelling, and I thought, get out. <laughs> okay, I don't know what to say here. I don't know when we're picking it up. But do I have any?
glad we did this. I'm glad we we're able to do a tournament. I'm, I'm glad it did. Yes. Okay. Okay. scoreless at halftime, right? Okay, so I say scoreless at halftime. <laughs> 